Whoa, I'm hey, way off camera. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream. Uh, I am your host, Jeffrey Card, and here I've got Jeff Salt. You can Hello. see his name in enormous letters down below him. Uh, he's a programmer on State of Decay 2. He worked on our uh, radio stuff, our explosive stuff. Uh, what else? Lots of things. Right now I'm doing a whole lot of uh, performance optimization. I did some of the like the graphical performance stuff, uh, fixed a whole bunch of weird flickering things there. Um, I've done a bunch of work with the uh, UI. If you don't like anything about the settings menu, uh, complain to actually complain to the community managers, and they'll get it to me. Um, <laughs> He's not responsible for most of it, but he is the one who's going to fix it if, uh, <laughs> if something goes wrong. Yes, so. yes, no. The problems were all done by other people, and I am merely fixing them. Oh, of course, yes. That's absolutely. Uh, yeah. I'm going to slide our camera over just a little just bit. Okay. I, when I was when I was uh, going solo for for a bit, uh, when we were te I was testing out the audio, uh, I need I, I slid it over to get myself on camera, and uh, it was not good for two people. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so if you guys have any questions about any of those features of the game, feel free to funnel them uh, to us. You know, just say, talk in the chat. We got both Mixer here and also, where's my controls? Uh, we got Mixer. We also got Twitch. So uh, everybody from those chats, feel free to just send us questions. Uh, if I, if we miss them from the chat, uh, Megan is gonna is gonna pass them on to us in here uh, via our Slack channel. And so we're gonna try to get to as many of your questions as we can. Uh, or you know. If you don't have questions, you can just watch Jeff attempt to play the game despite being a mouse and keyboard player and me having forced <laughs> him to use a controller. Uh, so there you go. Yeah. Um, well, first off, um, I see that someone has recognized me and um, has, in fact, remembered that the last time I was on a stream, um, I had uh, my leg in a cast. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, my foot's doing a lot better now. Um, I'm in physical therapy, and I'm getting... Uh, Back into doing some actual activity. So unfortunately, now instead of all of the uh, meetings you have to have just c crowding around your desk because no one wants to make you move, <laughs> you actually have to get up and go see other people. Uh, except I, people are actually uh, proactive enough that usually when I start messaging them on Slack, they'll just walk over to my desk anyway, so I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, let's, let's get into the actual game here. So we were just in the middle of a pretty <laughs> hair-raising situation. Right. So um, he dropped me into a place. There's a juggernaut. And um, I have a wonderful weapon with no bullets. Um, <laughs> oh, See? oh, cool. I mean, this is easy. Uh, what is it? Oh, and then my NPC friend just went ahead and did the thing. All right, Not what's... quite as hair-raising as we thought. Cool. All right. Farewell, juggernaut. Um, although we've got this... Wonderful survivor here, um, uh, equipped with a pyro launcher, which is currently one of my favorite guns in the game. Uh, if any of you are big enough fans to be watching this stream, but not big enough fans to have purchased the Independence Pack, um, <laughs> I highly recommend doing that. Uh, there's a bunch of really cool new stuff. Um, yeah, if you want to go to the Spy Locker, there is a Star Shank launcher and some uh, Star Shank uh, yeah. rounds in there for you. Um, button, weapons, give me that. Uh, that's no, a there's pyro. a pyro launcher too. There's also a pyro. I don't know if I've ammo for that in here. I think I've got I've got a character one of the characters is carrying all the all the pyro ammo. Ah, here we go. Star shank. Star shank. And then you've got um, the ammo for it right there above. Yep. I will equip this. Um and then right above You've got ten shots. There it is. I am used to uh, cheating myself all the ammo, so I don't know <laughs> uh, where all Just the playing with infinite ammo. Oh yeah, it's great. I'll just take all of it. Um, and then some rounds for my shotgun here, uh, which I am going to reload real quick. Man, controllers. <laughs> All right, um, equip, and then real quick, do a reload. Oh, oh um, please don't tell me this is a... Uh... Oh, it looks like Brant's decided to join us. Oh, hey, Brant. Aren't you supposed to be on sabbatical? <laughs> Seriously, Brant. Like, you, do, you don't understand the concept of medical leave. Uh, <laughs> this is, uh, unfortunately, you'll have to take my seat. Oh, no. Because, no, no this, is my, this is my one camera setup. You cannot be seen. You have to sit here. I don't need to be seen. No, you do. You do. You do have to be seen. You are the eye candy. That is your job. Well, no, don't have... I looked at the... I looked at the... Uh... The stream a little bit and, and realized it was it was entirely too good looking. So I, <laughs> I had to come in here. And well, thank you. I had to come in here and ugly it up a little bit. How is everybody? Hi. <laughs> right. So we did we did have a question. Somebody was asking about um, the the crafting interface, the 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 way that the uh, the base 
the base screen is structured so that mm -hmm. some things that you craft are as simple as like a, uh, a single click and then other things you have to dig for or even they kick you out of the of the menu. That's not really, uh, I don't think that's an area you actually worked on, was it, Jeff? Um, no, not really, but I know something about the system. Uh, so one of the things that we kind of have to work with um, is the fact that our UI, in order to like make sure that everything fits on the screen, um, sometimes we, I'm just going to pause this. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> well, so we basically get like that one row of icons. And if we need to have a facility that can do a lot of things, like if you install a mod with an ammo press, then the more, the more icons we add in there, like we're not just going to keep like making that window bigger and bigger. We're going to shove those into like the little subcategories. Um, and uh, there are there are some issues that we're tracking with um, the fact that like sometimes it'll dump you um, all the way out to the main or like all the way out of the base management screen entirely. Um, there's just like a lot of little um, polish things that we're kind of uh, keeping track of. Yeah. What is this? I think one of the issues is we're trying Broken. to do so many different things with the same piece of UI. I mean, the base screen can do so <clears throat> such a huge variety right. of actions. That you know, in an ideal world, just when you're when you're programming something like like a set of UI, you want to make it as consistent and simple as possible. Mm -hmm. And so, so you end up in weird situations where like the designers are coming to you, and it might, maybe not just with the base screen, but with any interface, the mm -hmm. designers are coming to you saying, "Hey, can we make this interface do this? Can we make it do this other crazy thing?" And the choices are either you know we have to spend you know weeks of time trying to reformat or re you know rearrange this piece of UI to do the thing the designer is wanting. Or we can press something into service to do it non-optimally and just right. get that done immediately. <laughs> right. So yeah, we've got only these six things here, um, and then we've got the mod slot at the bottom. If we just started adding like all of these extra rows, then this would basically just you know constantly add um, uh, just more and more height to it. Whereas we can have like this craft consumables menu where we can have all of these things in uh, wonderful things and. Um, you don't have enough uh, parts, and nobody knows mechanics. Oh, you know what? I forgot to switch back to the screen, so no one's seeing what you were doing. Oh, I apologize. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> I switched away when you paused, and I forgot to switch back. Ah, right. Um, well, I was basically just looking at the um, base management screen, and then like going in to basically say that like you go into this action thing, or the workshop's better for that. Uh, when you go into the action thing, like the fact that we can have all of these categories is really due to the fact that we have uh, this drill-in thing. We could not do it with this... Um, like base yeah. six slot thing. Yeah, if you remember the the original oh, game. Oh come on! This is my base, <laughs> or this is Jeffrey's base. Well, this is this is uh, one of the wonderful features of Camp Kalinqua is zombies just sneak in here. They just wander <laughs> in. <laughs> it's, That's it's, great. They yeah. have no concept of of like giant walls or anything like that. They're like, oh, I can just walk in. No, it's okay. <laughs> Summer camps are uh, you know. Thank nice. you everybody They're for the well wishes. I'm I'm still working on getting better, but uh, I'm so bored at my house. <laughs> And in my house is across the street, so it's easy for me to come bug these oh, guys. Are you kidding me? But uh, but yeah, anyway, thrill seeker, your 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 comment about uh, about you know wanting to be able to stay in the screen while you're crafting nope. that makes a lot of sense. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll I'm gonna make a note. We're gonna we're gonna look into that. Uh, well, on what exactly is going on there? Chances are, in a lot of these cases, there's a really good reason for it. There's you know either we we're pressing some piece of UI into service or something right. like that. I'm gonna go home, everybody. Oh, take All right. care. See you later, Brent. Oh. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, I just um, wanted to come say hi. Ugh. So yeah, so a lot of times there there is a there is a really good purpose for it, and so you know, we can't always make the changes that we'd love to make in response to feedback. See but you. Uh, see you, Brent. But yeah, we'd, we'd love to uh, look into that. So I'm going to make a little note for myself. I've got to open up a little... Uh, <laughs> actually, you know what I'll do? I'll open up the my Slack provides this wonderful thing where I can open up a channel uh, to myself and just send myself little notes. So I'll be like, um, Thrill Seeker wants not to <laughs> get kicked out of menus while crafting. There, I just sent a note to Jeffrey Card, and he's going to uh, try to look into that a little bit afterwards. Hopefully. Um, but again, no promises. You know, obviously, there's there's a, there's a complicated story and vast array of reasons behind everything that's in this game. Yeah. And so the fact that I'm making note to myself doesn't actually mean I'm going to find out we could do anything about the issue that you're facing. Although uh, there's a lot of things that are going to be coming up in has CU three hit? I don't think so. Um, yeah. uh, we've got a we've got a really big patch coming with a lot of uh, quality of life stuff. Uh, that's actually what I've been working on uh, for the last month and a half now. Um, so we've got a whole bunch of things that we've heard about from the community, um, a whole bunch of things that we've been tracking internally before that. Um, Most of which we probably can't call out individually until we're actually ready to ship it out, Until we're right? actually ready to ship it out. Because <laughs> even though, like, it is in the can, we are basically going through a lot of, like, the final testing stuff to make sure that it gets out. 
Um, like, we, we cannot, act, like, th something could go catastrophically wrong, and, like, I could be pulled aside and said, yeah, okay, you know that wonderful new thing that you made? We have to pull it right now, because it breaks <laughs> absolutely everything. It better not, but it is a possibility. Uh, let's see. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear out this play cart, because, like, the only mission that is available besides the legacy one is the play cart. How do I get to inventory on a controller? Oh, uh, down on the D-pad. Down on the D-pad. All right. Okay, so you got your shotgun, you got your star shotgun, shank. Shotgun, and I really like the star shanker. Um, because, so, this is a, uh, this is a custom launcher. It is basically a whole bunch of um, explosives strapped to a Nerf gun. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, no, it's not a Nerf gun. There are copyright issues oh, wait, there. Wait, is that, is that the, uh, is that the pyro? No, this is the oh, star, shank. star shanker. This okay, is cool. the star shank. Again. Oh, god damn it! <laughs> What's Dodge? Dodge is B. Dodge is B. That's all right, right. All right. For those of you who just joined us, uh, uh, Jeff usually plays with a, a mouse and keyboard, and so he's kind of relearning how to use the uh, the controller, which he does not usually use day to day. Yeah. All right. So this has two shots in it, uh, mostly for balance reasons, because otherwise you could uh, pretty quickly tear through um, a play card. But this is great because um, what this does is it will fire and sorry, it launches. Um, not Roman candles, that's the other one. Um, but it launches um, a big explosive fireworks uh, that's... Oh, wow. Hi, guys. Um, that launches... Um, okay, you were not here a moment ago. Um, so basically, like, there's a big sticky bit on the front of the um, launcher. Okay, cool. So, if you shoot it into a thing, it sticks. It also sets fire to things. And then, after it whistles, and then it blows up a bunch. <laughs> and I should probably be reloading while I do this. It also oh. attracts other zombies, yes. right? Yes, while it is whistling, it does that thing. Um, and so you're so, not going to be attra attacking, uh, getting attacked by the zombies while this thing is right. active, usually. Oh, and then I forgot how to do... I forgot how to reload, and that took long enough that um, <laughs> I got... And now your axe is gone. Now my axe is gone. Oh, my God. Why did you start me off with this? <laughs> Again, I had just barely switched to this character, and I had not tried to equip her yet. Uh, we, 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 you know, ran out of time while I was testing the audio earlier. I did at least give but you one painkiller, so you know, I've got that's one painkiller. Nice. I've got two energy drinks, which is great because I'm gonna need to. I hope you're not attached to the survivor. <laughs> no, that's fine. We, we we kill characters every single stream. Great, uh, because I am gonna do my fucking best to get the hell out of here because. Uh... <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah, and then you can start using some consumables and. Uh, well. Uh, no, I'm just going to take this this uh, wonderful lady back to base and uh, get her checked into the infirmary. And do you have any blood plague cure? Uh, oh, yeah. Is she about to? She's not quite. She's not quite yet. there. Oh, she's about to be there. Turbo. Turbo. There we go. All right. So um, get, get off of my car. Get off of my car. I'm trying to leave. <laughs> uh, so uh, Diablo Lurker asks, are we going to be able to make human slaves uh, when no. we're doing an evil playthrough? That's not really the vibe of this game. Like this, there are games, you know, who where sort of the thrill of the game is to try to do the most horrific things you possibly can and uh, and sort of live out kind of a, a, a weird, n you know, non-realistic fantasy of of, uh, of playing as an evil character. That's not really the vibe of this game. You can make some hard choices, even some harsh choices, mm -hmm. but we're not trying to lean full on into making you as evil as possible. It's just kind of not, you know, this game it really does have sort of a a, a, a pro-social, hope-filled sort of message to it, right. even in the face of horror. And, uh, and we don't really want to change that. We're not really looking for more ways to give people opportunities to do terrible things to each other. Especially, you know, just making light of, 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 of you know, things that really have caused a lot of pain in people's, you know, real lives. Right. Oh, just god damn it, I almost got back to base without getting the plague, and then this wonderful <laughs> gentleman. I think we have collected a fair amount of cure, so... That would be great. We're probably okay. And there you go, you got some samples right there. Nice. Um, Intrepid Pioneer asks, is it a bug that survivors at home keep disappearing? Um, so, that is actually a sort... That is a... Feature! Uh, yes, it is a technical <laughs> limitation. So, um, there is kind of an upper bound to... 
Okay, so I'm really hoping that you actually have cure already made up. Nope. Of course not. Um, I did just get a few meds though, so maybe that'll be fine. Nice. Um, so there is um, kind of a technical limitation there. Um, we basically want to make sure that the game runs smoothly, so there is an upper number of Camp Kalinqua. I um, should move bases uh, between this and the next stream. <laughs> um, or I can just do that for you now. Um, That's true. Do you have any preferences? Not really. Cool. I like all the bases. Um, do you even have enough influence to do that? Uh, I've got like 1,800, I think. Oh, yeah, oh, cool. more. Cool. Tons of influence. Um, so uh, there's an upper bound on the number of human characters that we can really have on the screen and keep the game still running smoothly. So uh, survivors will actually disappear if they're not doing anything useful and you have a lot of survivors. Yeah. So if you've got only like three people in your community, you'll always find them all at home. But if when you get up, start to getting up into like seven or eight people, we have to call out a few of them in order to keep the game running smoothly and, and, and you know, save room uh, for, for instance, lots of zombies to be able to attack your base. Right. Because each character in the game is expensive for the game to keep track of. Humans are more expensive than oh. zombies, so each human you remove lets you put multiple zombies into the game. Um, oh yeah, do you want to, yeah, we should probably let the, uh, the, the radio room finish. Before oh. we actually before move. we move, but uh, I think the time it'll take you to, to to move will probably cover us. Cool. So, uh, my, one of my favorite blooper videos anyone did was the one where the character was doing that animation, but she was holding a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> she jams a crowbar into her neck. I think that was in a. Uh, I think IGN put that video out. It was pretty funny. That's great. Um, we've had some pretty spectacular bugs that I am consistently really embarrassed by and constantly work to try to fix. <laughs> Um, Hansel Wadolo asks, can there be a way to switch between guns without going into the inventory? Um, we've thought about that, but, like, we've got only so many buttons on this thing. <laughs> um, so it, like, I'm a super huge fan of, like, a sidearm. So in, you know, most shooters, like most dedicated shooters, you have, like, a real, uh, really good quick switch. Mm -hmm. So you've got, like, your, your primary weapon, and then you run out of ammunition for that, and then you drop it, you pull out your sidearm. Um, so that you don't have to, you know, spend however many seconds um, switching magazines. Um, but unfortunately, like, so that that's yet another feature that we had to um, kind of prioritize against all of the other things that we wanted to make sure that we got into the game. Yeah. And then also, like, we're out of buttons. <laughs> like, I th you, I think technically, I, I I know where I would put it <laughs> if we got it. But uh, did you just fire off an artillery strike? No, no, no. I should have looked. <laughs> I need to actually look at what you have before I do things, because uh, the artillery strike would have uh, saved some stuff. Oh, yeah, that's true. And then actually loading up on consumables before uh, jumping into a thing. Let's definitely get a working melee weapon. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I think she might be a bladed type person. Is this the this currently is this currently live build, or is this This the... is the currently live build, yes. Okay, dang. Uh, because there's some... Um... We got a Grillmeister. If we you do want have. A oh yes. Um, oh, I think like I I started. Um, oh, repair. Cool. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. it looks like it was damaged a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna equip this, and then I'm just gonna dump this in the locker for you to deal with. Um, so I started out talking about like how cool a lot of the stuff in uh, the Independence Pack is, um, but like the Star Shanker, like uh, I'm just gonna waste some ammo. It. Gotta reload first. <laughs> the, the star shanker uh, fires around and it sticks into a thing and I don't know if you can hear the game audio but it whistles and then it explodes um, that looks even better indoors I've never even fired the thing indoors before um, it's pretty great um, whereas the pyro launcher basically it is this um, it is a big old cylinder of Roman candles and the trigger basically just sets all of them off and they all fire one right after the other and when they hit they explode and send fire everywhere. Um, and I think you have um, a survivor with one of them? I think so, I'm not sure which survivor um, it is. I'm gonna drop all this stuff that I really wanna use. Um, Maybe switch to somebody else? Yeah. So, so one of the things that's interesting about, you know, to kind of illustrate the way that we you know, need to operate sometimes, the, um, the pyro launcher, which fires with like 20 Roman candles or something mm -hmm. in rapid fire, that basically all that all that's doing is you know we we already had weapons that fired bursts. Yep. Um, that would fire like bursts of three rounds, and that's what they that's what that feature was designed for was you know to handle like assault rifles that fire bursts of three rounds. You know, which just like in the real in the real world. But because we didn't put an upper bound on that, we just sort of said here's the concept of a burst. <laughs> we just made a burst of twenty uh, for that particular weapon, and so and and it just kind of works the way it works. 
And a lot of the time, you know, what, what you end up doing with, with, with expansion packs like this is sort of discovering what the edges of your system it are. Mm -hmm. You know, they're trying to explore like, okay, well, we don't have the time or the money or the resources to create some entirely new thing from scratch just to fuel one particular weapon. That would be, you know, an unbalanced use of our time and resources. All right, check this. But if we come up with a particular weapon <laughs> that just takes advantage of existing things, then, then we can get it done in the time that we have and provide a brand new experience to the player. Yeah. <sighs> Farewell. So we are falling behind on questions here. Oh, so, um, let's see. So Thrill Seeker wants to know, um, uh, would it be possible for clients uh, to, to see host resource amounts and limits instead of their own in the screen? The tough part of that is we literally only have a spot to show one set. We do. And um, so if you could, if you, we had to kind of pick which one to show, right? Yeah, so hypothetically, like if you walk in, so like when you walk into your base, you get this pop-up here. And theoretically what we could do, um, <laughs> Don't like, tell them what we can do. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just, kidding. just purely theoretically, uh, <laughs> we could uh, we could show the host resources when you don't have your inventory screen up, um, and then when you when you pull the inventory up, then we would switch to your actual resources. But we'd have to be very clear about yes. which one we were doing it because players who didn't know what to expect would be completely you know completely, right. completely confused by that. Right. Exactly. So uh, like even when you like leave the thing, like we show a slightly different. No, uh, I guess it's not slightly different. Um, but, but, there, but there is a different version when you bring up the base menu, for instance. Right. And so, so maybe that could be the place where we made a distinction. Maybe, but the clients also can't see the base menu. So. Oh, that's true. So yeah, right. that doesn't work. So yeah, there's just there's a lot of stuff we would have to think about. That's that's uh, it's a valid suggestion though, right. because there are decisions like like if you're cooperating with somebody, there are decisions you want to make about whether a particular resource mm -hmm. would be more useful for you to just, you know, uh, to 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 use yourself or to give to them. Uh, like like oh, do they really need these <laughs> these meds? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so so it's it's a difficult it's a difficult challenge, and it's you know we're, especially when we're working within a UI that you know it's got per one slot for each thing, and and you know we don't have a lot of room to just say oh well, here's a completely brand new piece of UI, mm -hmm. like right now like we're you know we're working on uh, future expansion packs that need new UI, right. but each new thing we add you know it has to be very carefully controlled to make sure that it fits mm -hmm. uh, within our budgets uh, because we can't just we can't just throw things willy-nilly into the game we're already sort of hitting the maximum of, of, of what we can afford to do uh, with the resources that we have um, what's a good home site <laughs> certainly not the Clarington house uh, oh come on it's named after Deb Clarington from uh, from a, a, a popular uh, comedy zombie movie that came out oh. recently called um, Night of the Living Deb <laughs> So it took me a second because I knew it was a pun, and my brain was searching for things that could be puns on Deb. And unfortunately, that's every zombie property known to man. Yeah. Because they all have dead in them. Yeah. But yeah, no, that was uh, that, that was that was a fun movie, and so yeah, just, na named it after that. Should I actually just stick in Camp Kalakwa because uh, you could? Is this the better? Isn't this one of the best in the map? It is actually one of the best in the map. That is why we're there. I think. Uh, there's, there, isn't there like a? Fine. Uh, I can't ever remember what's on what's on which map. I get. I, I'm, I'm terrified to name a base. Actually, do folks want to suggest uh, a base that we could move to um, uh, in Meager Valley that is not Camp Kalenkwa? Um, if you got, if you guys have a favorite, then uh, then, we, then maybe we'll just sort of take your requests and and and, and, and see where to go from there. Uh, Trekkie sixty six wants to know if we're going to add more special weapons in the future. Um, uh, that is definitely a strong possibility. We've got a lot of really good tools for doing so. Um, so, despite being like the explosives programmer and like in charge of making everything that explodes and burns, um, that I was act nice, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I like pickup trucks because if you time the uh, damn. if you time things just right, you can like get zombies in the back of the truck. That's great. <laughs> um, um, I actually didn't have to do a whole lot of work um, on the independence packet um, myself. It was basically just like if we encountered like a really weird edge case, uh, then that's what um, that's when I'd have to step in. But for the most part, um, our I'm trying to talk here. Um, for the most part, do you want me to take over while you're? Uh, oh chatting? no 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 no! This this I can handle. Um, for the most part, um, our designers were basically just able to um, step up and use the tools that we already had in order to make a lot of the really cool stuff. So we already had the concept of a grenade launcher, a thing that launches grenades super quickly. And we already okay. had the concept of uh, explosives that um, explode and turn into a whole bunch of fire. Um, and then we use that and basically just combine that into uh, um, a thing that, it, uh, that shoots a whole bunch of explosives that turn into fire. 
Yeah, so yeah, between uh, you know Brian on the design side and Gronk on the art side, we, we just ended up discovering a lot of weird ways we could take the systems we already had and make them do things they'd never done before, which was, which was pretty cool. All right. True Vulgarian wants to know, why can't guests see the base layout? Um, that is a... Rocket's <laughs> red glare here. Um, so part, I, th I think the main reason for it oh. was to put a really um, clear divide between what the guests could do. Yes. Um, and what, and what could, because there's, there, we definitely wanted to make sure that guests, like total strangers that you invited into your game, couldn't just go in and just like sell all of your facilities right. or, or whatever, do things that were really destructive to your game. Um, and so we wanted to draw a fine line between what the host controls and then what guests are able to do. And and what we what ended up feeling like the sort of the clearest way to go. Oh no! <laughs> ah, Feral. You know, all I want to do is pick up these samples. So it ended up being being sort of a really clear solution to um, to basically say you know the host has the menu and the guests have walking up in person. And then we would draw a line between the things you could do while walking up in person and the things you could do from the menu. And 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 just just made that div divide really clear so that the guests didn't expect. Well, please tell me I get to fight for life against a feral. To be able, the guests don't expect to be able to have full strategic control over the base because they don't even have the menu that allows them to do it. Yeah. They know what their what their sort of level of involvement is. God damn it! God damn it! You are so screwed. <laughs> I think I got the feral though, right? Right? Um, right? I think I don't even have I don't even have any medkits. Oh wow, but you got delicious snacks. They are. Do snacks heal you? Uh, no. <laughs> not not like in most. So it's so weird. I mean, our game is is just as much like this as any other. The things that people use food for in games. Yeah. Makes no sense. Like, like you know, who who is sitting there in the middle of combat and suddenly gets out a hamburger <laughs> and starts eating it because it's going to make it's going to make the difference between victory and failure. Yeah. Man, I don't even remember what we were talking about. Okay, I'm just gonna get in my car and leave. I'm gonna get in my car and leave. I have destroyed the play cart, and I do not care enough about these. So we've, uh, we've, we get some questions occasionally about visual bugs and things like that in the game. Um, and that isn't so much uh, my and Jeff's area. So what we should do is get some of our tech artists in here uh, for, for a stream sometime soon. So you guys can ask things like, you know, like what, what causes, you know, flickering on the side of a road or something like that. You know, questions like that. So I can actually answer some of oh, those questions. Do? Okay. Yeah. Um, because I actually um, have helped with a bunch of the graphics programming stuff. Okay. Um, Never I'm not, mind. I don't I'm not know the your world, job. I'm not the world's best graphics programmer. Programmer, um, but I am one of the few people at the studio who knows any graphics programming, so I wind up with um, a bunch of graphics programming tasks. Um, so as soon as I get, can get to someone somewhere relatively safe, because I have you know um, massive amounts of injuries and no bandages, um, I'm just going to go back to the base. Um, actually, no, there's an outpost around here, isn't it? Isn't there? Uh, you had something. Here. So, uh, um, so things like flickering on the side of the road. Um, so there's actually like a bunch of complicated stuff that goes into that. Um, so, so, so the roads, some of the roads are not actually um, just straight up painted onto the. Uh, um, yeah, supply locker. Please be my salvation. Um, they're not just straight up painted onto the terrain. They're actually um, like a separate mesh that floats on top of it, um, mm -hmm. which allows us to um, do a little bit more like um, clever things with like arrangement and painting, um, and then also do fun things like um, we can um, like have the road texture itself vary. So like you can have a whole bunch of, um, like the line patterns are different, the patterns of decay are different, um, a whole bunch of other things like that. First aid kit, please. I will just use this right now. Um, and then take another one with me. So, um, by the way, when we're hmm. talking about what base we want to take over, um, oh, right. we, we've had a few different, uh, so some folks wanted the rural police department, some wanted the brewery. Uh, Gab the Lazy was extremely emphatic uh -huh. about wanting the Mazara farm, though. All right, where's uh, that? So that's right in the middle of the map. I've actually got a map up here on the screen to read a reference. It's right there. Uh, right here. So, is that it right there? Mazara yeah, farm. Mazara farm. So um, if you want to make that your t final destination. I'm going to need to recruit someone, and I don't think oh. I have the time for that. That is a five-person base. Well, you know what? Uh, I will recruit somebody later on, and I will get us to the Mazara farm. So next time, uh, next time we do a stream, we'll be there. Um, and I have no other goals to work on right now, so... I'm curious if anyone in the chat uh, gets the reference that we're making with the name of the Mazara farm. Uh, so I don't. <laughs> so I'll explain it later if anybody wants to uh, to put it out there, though. All right. 
right now, I really want to just go back and get all those plague samples because I worked hard for them. Nice guy Will wants to know if uh, the the fancy stuff on the front of this car actually reduces vehicle degradation. It does. Yeah, um, yeah um, the cow catcher on this. No, cow catcher bulldozer. He calls, it, he calls it a cow splitter, which sounds horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, it's it's. Uh, I mean, that's that's the thing that you could, uh, a way that you could use to describe that, yeah. Um, so that is a, uh, yeah, the, the various sections of the vehicles have, like, different health values. Um, so, like, some some vehicles are, like, super easy to damage. Ooh, is that something that I can use for a quest? Um, some things are super easy to damage. Some things are super difficult to damage. Um, but yeah, the the front of that car is hard to damage because it's got like this big heavy thing. Because it wouldn't make any sense if you had a um, oh, there are painkillers here. Ah, and a soda can bomb. Finally, my area of responsibility. Um, so it wouldn't make any sense if you had a, a car that looked like it could take a whole bunch of damage because there's like this big snowplow on the front of it, um, <laughs> and then it couldn't actually take a whole bunch of damage. Um, but yeah, if you get things running into the side of the car, I'm pretty sure that um, is a lot easier to damage than like just the front of the car. Uh, it false, also... uh, Face Bond wants to know, uh, is it possible to make a, the fire station into a base in the future? Uh, uh, that would be fun. That would be fun. Uh, it is definitely, it would, it would probably have to be, made, if we were to do something like that, it would have to be in a completely new map uh, because there's a lot. Of, it's, building a base in our game is very different from building every other kind of building. Right. And we've we've already pretty deeply committed to a lot of the choices that were made surrounding the the buildings you see already in the maps that we already have. Right. A lot of the things that need to go into the, like the the structure of the layout um, include things like okay, how many facility slots do we need to have? Okay, how much space does that take, um, how easy should it be to get between the facility slots so that you can interact with them, so on and so on. There's like tons of considerations that we need to make really early on in the process. So going back and basically just saying, all right, well, we've got this thing and now we want to make it into a base, is actually like generally pretty difficult. Yeah. So, but... Uh, actually, but doing a fire station base was actually one of our early ideas that, that ended up not making it into the final game. Yeah. We actually had we had ideas of doing like a, a, a watchtower, even that was one of those training towers. Yeah. That uh, the the that uh, the fire firemen used to, to practice using ladders and 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 things like that. So it's so it was it's a really good idea. We would love to do it, uh, but uh, we'll just we'll have to see what opportunities the future pre presents us. Um, the cargo. Where did my cargo? There. So let's see here. Um, Del Z Slayer asks, uh, "Do plague heart samples that you get from destroying the heart despawn if not picked up?" Um, I think I may have just run into that because I think I just saw a plague heart vanish when I had not looted it yet. Um, so but I actually, <laughs> I actually don't know off the top of my head if that is a legit thing. I do know that when when bodies have stuff on them, we try to keep them around as long as we can. Right. And the and the remains of a plague heart is technically the body of an enemy. Um, no, it's actually not. It's not. Um, I thought it, it was. It uses the same technology as our supply drops. When you uh, really when you destroy a plague heart, you are um, the the zombie are effectively calling in a supply drop for you. They're so nice about it. I did not realize that. I, what I thought, uh, maybe and maybe this was just something that was true at the very beginning, was that they were essentially enemies. So, sessile enemies. So, um, they are, good use of sessile. Thank um, you. They are, um, they're all, they are enemies. They are technically, under the hood, just another type of zombie. Um, this is a really good car for clearing this out. Um, <laughs> they're technically just another kind of zombie. Oh no. But, there you go, nice work. Um, but when they die, instead of leaving a corpse, we actually despawn them and replace them with um, something that's a little bit easier for us to manage. Um, because the way that they do, um, like, the way that they have to be looted, um, zombie corpses can't be looted. Like, that's just kind of a thing. We don't have any structure oh, in place. Right. Come on, what's the dodge button on controllers? Uh, B, 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 B. B. Please stop eating me. Um, so zombie corpses can't be looted, which means that we need to be able to... Um, eat some fucking snacks. Um, so we need to be, we needed to be able to like have some technology um, to allow you to loot a zombie. So um, we added, we basically just kind of hijacked the technology that we built for supply drops um, and then turned that into a thing that will, al that allows you to um, loot a plague sample. So basically we just drop a thing that you can loot. It's not a standard container. It's why that, it's why you don't have to search it. Um, it's basically just like a thing that you interact with. 
Well, that is fascinating, and this is one of the reasons why, like, I mean, this, this team is large enough that there's no one person who knows the answer to every single question. I thought I knew how those things worked, and I clearly didn't. Mm. So uh, I'm glad that we have Jeff on here yeah. to, uh, to answer questions more accurately. Um, I don't think anybody actually went for my uh, my, my challenge to to uh, to, to uh, you know understand the reference uh, of the Mazzara farm, but um, Glenn Mazzara is the name of the showrunner of the second season of The Walking Dead, which took place entirely on a farm. That's like <laughs> that's three <laughs> levels of indirection too deep. Yeah, but the thing is, I actually you know people people gave that season of The Walking Dead a lot of crap. I actually really liked it, and so I kind of wanted to you know drive some positive attention to it because you know it's uh, you know. I, 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 had, I had a great time with that one. So, you know, uh, be, people, I think people very often, uh, they'll get very, very into a TV show or a game or a movie, and and any deviation from what they're expecting from it will get them so upset yeah. uh, that, that they end up, you know, kind of unfairly uh, kind of demonizing the people that were involved mm. and, 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 you know, being kind of kind of cruel. And so wherever possible, I, you know, I like to try to counteract that you know that kind of experience. Yeah. I've made I've made some bad things before in my life, and I'm very glad that they were not public enough to have to haunt me uh, for <laughs> for the rest of my career. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so I have some very positive feelings towards uh, towards The Walking Dead and the early seasons, and hmm. and so you know wanted to wanted to show some love there. Let's see. So uh, so Blaze Experience wants to know how does the looting of hostile humans work? Then is it different from the zombies, or is it like right? Yeah. Um, so that was actually so part of the thing, uh, part of the um, the way that we wound up developing this game is that a lot of things um, were happening. Where's the supply locker in this? Um, sure. A lot of things wound up happening at like different points in the development process. So when we were um, creating the technology that we needed for um, human looting, the supply drop stuff hadn't actually come online yet. So uh, we actually create a container for you, like a, a special type of container, the same um, as any other searchable container. Um, and we use that to, uh, um, uh, I have the breaching hammer instead of the thing. Oh, right, because I did the thing. Can you not repair from an outpost? Oh, it has to be in the, sorry, I'm yeah, getting, yeah, I'm getting distracted. Um, <laughs> But so that technology did not actually exist exist yet for the supply drops. So basically, we we created a, a container that you have to search, um, and it's basically like any other container in the game, uh, just stored in a slightly different place in the in memory. But but that wouldn't have worked for the zombies because it was built specifically for the humans, which, um, are, which are pretty distinct. Or kind of, sort of. Um, Pro uh, probably getting into a level of complexity would be hard to just dictate over the air. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what. Um, I have zero parts. We used a bunch. I, I made a bunch of explosives in case you wanted to use them. Uh, um, and, and then didn't just tell you. And didn't tell me and didn't put it on any of the characters that, uh, cool. I'm yeah, well, they're, they're sitting in the supply locker. Yeah, they're sitting in the supply locker. All right, cool. Um, By the way, um, the guy who, had, who asked uh, that question, um, Blaze Experience, he's, he's got a podcast called The Blaze Experience. Ah. Uh, spelled, Blaze spelled like the French name and experience starting with XP. Uh, you can look it up on iTunes. Uh, I've had a lot of fun listening to it. It's, it's uh, mm. He, he goes. He it's it's a State of Decay focused podcast. Oh, uh, nice. He, though he hits other games that, that sort of hit the same kind of interest, other survival games and um, some some battle royale games and things like that. But uh, it's been a lot of fun for me to listen to it because he get he he sort of he ranks uh, features in the game based on. Uh, was you know, which was ones he are the most one useful. who did the um, the. There was a there was a video that I saw like the other day about uh, the usefulness of uh, each individual kind of uh, fire explosive uh, uh, flammables. I don't know if he did that one. I've only listened to the most recent uh, podcast he did. I know he ranked all the all the uh, upgraded cars in the game. Ah, nice. Um, and so as much as like you know as fun as the meat wagon was, for instance, it got kind of low because because uh, it's kind of slow and it only holds two people. Yeah. Even though it does. Fart meat, uh, which you know, for me would have given I would have given it an extra hundred points for farting meat, but you know, whatever. Uh, anyway, point is, uh, Blaze Experience is pretty cool, and uh, you should check it out if you're if you know you're a fan of State of Decay 2, Which you know, I don't know why you're hopefully, here. Hopefully, hopefully you're, you're a fan if you are watching our stream. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, uh, hmm. Blaze Experience asks. Uh, speaking of Blaze Experience, uh, is, it, is it is it difficult to program a feature like the Pyrohawk horn being always on versus the Burninator horn being pressed to use? I was not actually uh, the person who did that, um, and it's not particularly difficult to code. It's just um, uh, like what systems we hooked into it when uh, we were doing things, and I think 
I think that may have been more of a conscious design decision, like especially because I think the uh, so the the pyrohawk consumes fuel while it's active. Right? I think they both they both do. Oh, they both they do. both consume fuel, uh, but maybe it's different amounts, and maybe it's uh, yeah. th there could have been any number of different reasons why. And unfortunately, neither of us was the w ones making those uh, this decisions. Right. So uh, can't answer that one really with a lot of specificity. Okay, so. Um... I am frustrated enough um, by this lack of sorting on this thing that um, it sure would be nice if uh, hypothetically in a future balance patch we would have any sort of inventory sorting. <laughs> uh, we actually got a question that's pretty appropriate for you. Oh. Um, why can't you kill, this is from Jay Carter, uh, 703, hmm? why can't you kill hostile NPCs with explosives? Or I thought you could. You is it just, should be able to. Is it just harder? Maybe um, they just don't so take it, as much damage so, from the zombies do. Um, it is harder. Um, like even even me. Like uh, yeah, this is your save. Um, okay, like it. you know, even if I stand literally on top of this, this dealt me what? It gave me a big injury and was like. I don't know, 20 health on top of that. But like, if that had happened to a zombie, legs would have been blown off, right? right? Um, so it is definitely not as easy to kill people. I know that there's some like um, realism kind of um, immersion breaking sort of thing, but oh, come on, I, mean, I literally just blew myself up. I know that made a lot of noise. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, so basically like the math that we use uh, to determine how you damage zombies versus how you damage humans is entirely different. Um, so, uh, like, and, humans, and, yeah. humans have health. Zombies have heads. That, that, <laughs> that's basically it. Like, you can, yeah. you can blow a body part off, and there is some internal math. Like, um, we know that it would be really frustrating if there were, like, random chances to um, blow zombie limbs off. Oh, I literally just stopped so that I could refuel my car. That is why I stopped, and now I haven't refueled my car, and I'm making <laughs> a bunch of noise driving. So I'm not going to be able to refuel my car. Um, but basically, the, the NPCs use the same rules as the player characters as players to, do, to yes. determine how what kind of damage they take. And so we tuned it for the player characters because that's who you're dealing with most often. Right. And then the NPCs, they they get to be just as resilient as you do. Right. Um, there are some numbers buried deep, deep within um, the the configuration files um, that. Um, uh, that do tune how much damage our hostiles take versus humans, but I and but I'm not sure um, whether there was a conscious design decision made to make everyone uh, work along the same lines or whatnot. Well, I can imagine that you know I mean we already kind of struggle with the fact that we we want our game to like you know headshots against zombies always kill zombies unless right. you got a helmet on. Right. And we kind of you know we didn't want to do uh, the kind of uh, the kind of game where you know you get a headshot against a human character and it's like oh no sorry you need five headshots to kill a human character. Right. So our humans are actually already kind of easy to kill on compared to the standards of a lot of other games. Yeah. You know you get a headshot on a guy they're pretty much going to die. Right. Um and you know and it's it's not quite it's not that's not quite exactly true but it's pretty close. And so, you know, so given the fact that, you know, under certain conditions, fighting humans is almost a little bit too easy in our mm -hmm. game, having one tool that is not OP against them right. actually kind of feels pretty good. I was not involved in actually tuning that, and so I can't say if that was actually the rationale that was behind it, but that's what I think of uh, when, when, when I look at that. Um, let's see here. Oh, this is an interesting one. Um, Hemorrhoid Master. Nice name. Uh, wants to know how do you guys come up with features? Does everyone chime in, or is it decided by some you know smaller group of people? Um, that is a complicated question. So yeah. um, we have a very kind of internally open design process. Um, we come up with um, the things that we want to be making, um, and then I have the kick, right? Yeah, I've got the kick. Um, <laughs> So we uh, we come up with kind of like the things that we sort of want to be doing, um, and uh, this is a thing that's um, actually started a little bit more uh, recently at the company. Um, but we yeah, basically we're kind of in flux right now. We're kind of trying to move towards a more o open process. Right. Um, so we basically um, come up with um, the teams of people that we think would be good at making that thing. So we get a programmer. We get a please don't reach him. Can I? He's driving the car. Woohoo! I'm not gonna blow up my own car. <laughs> um, out of spite. Ah! So many zombies. You got bombs. I do, bombs. I do have bombs, and... Oh, that took out one guy. Please. Nice. 
Unfortunately, they also attract lots of guys. Yep. All right, <laughs> now I have Plague. All right, I really hope that you're not particularly attached to uh, this actually pretty <laughs> skilled survivor. Oh, that's okay. Uh, so, so there are a lot of companies where um, where the the process is very top down. Where you know, there's there's a handful of people. Nice. Well, there's a handful of people who make all of the uh, creative decisions, and then everyone else sort of works for them. Right. And it's very easy to even if you don't intend to have a company work that way, it's very easy to slip into that by accident. Right. Just because it's it's very efficient to have a few people making decisions, writing documents, and passing them out, and it's very easy to just accidentally do that, even if you wanted to have a more open and egalitarian process. So we're working pretty hard here to try to really push ourselves in the direction of you know recognizing that. We've hired a lot of veterans here. People right. in all of our disciplines have been working in the game industry for a long time, playing games for a long time, mm -hmm. and they're all, you know, potentially going to have a lot of really good ideas. And it would be a terrible waste right. of talent for, for for a handful of people to be making all of the plans and decisions. Yeah, exactly. And ignoring everyone else. Yeah. So what we do um, is we get um, we basically like assemble these small teams of uh, people. So we've got like a programmer or two. We've uh. got a <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, we've got a, a programmer or two, we get a designer, we get some QA people, we get some fucking sprint button is on that. Left bumper, yeah. Left bumper. Oh, you are just gone. I, I'm so glad this is your I, I'm safe. Really, I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed that you lasted as long as you did in the situations you got into here. I mean, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> well, there goes the power hey, launcher. Passive noise from population effects has oh, changed. Oh yeah, now we're down to the three survivors. Yeah, um, that's so, true. So yeah, we gather um, a whole bunch of different people. Um, I have no idea who Kristen is. Um, <laughs> and then basically we sit down and say, okay, we have uh, we have this problem. We want to make this sort of thing. How do we make that sort of thing? Um, so one of the things that we actually did for the uh, really big upcoming um, bug fixing and kind of quality of life patch that we've got going on. Um, basically, we got um, a bunch of programmers and a quality assurance person. Um, sorry, a, a tester in more common parlance. Um, <laughs> and we basically sat down and said, "Okay." Oh, and our and Wonder, our community manager. Um, we got us all in Hi, a room Wonder. on a Slack channel, and we basically just started saying, "Okay, cool. Well, uh, what are the things that the community is looking for? What are the things that um, we personally feel bad about having shipped, um, and so on and so on?" <laughs> and basically, like, made a, a huge list of things, and then started like figuring out, okay, what in fact has a really high impact on things? Um, what happens uh, What happens a lot? What are people seeing a lot? Um, and then we basically like got the ability to make all these decisions. Um, we didn't have like this, this was not handed down from on high. Uh, we had a whole bunch of people in a room trying to think of uh, what is going to be the best way that we can tackle these problems. Yeah, the on high decision was let's do a team like this. Right. And then all of the smaller decisions were just made by the team themselves. Yeah. We were given um, uh, what five weeks, three programmers, and the ability to call in other people um, just in case we needed some extra help. Um, and yeah, basically just from there had the freedom to do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so uh, like one of the, I mean, what this this comes out next week. What's, when's oh, the, God. when's the... I don't think we've officially said. We're, I actually don't remember, so don't... So, so don't, don't, don't listen take, to him. Don't take any <laughs> anything. Um, but one of the things that I... I mean, I, for, why can't we even talk about anything? I'm yeah, concerned about all these things. Yeah, we want, um, we want to be careful. We don't want to make any promises that could possibly get, have to back out. Uh, YOLO. Uh, one of the things that I... Um, uh, so I'm one of the I'm like the radio guy, um, and one of the things that um, has been kind of bothering me is um, at some point um, we accidentally turned off the ability for clients to. Uh, um, so uh, we we act, we accidentally disabled the ability for client players to use their own radio commands. So if you made. <laughs> Um, if you made friends with like the auto mechanics um, in your own game, and they gave you the ability to call in, it's like, cars, and, right? yeah, they'll deliver a vehicle to you, and then you went to someone else's game, uh, that capability disappeared. Um, but one of the things that we were originally thinking of when we were building the system is that when you were coming in as a client, you could be calling in supply drops, you could be asking for vehicles, you could be calling in airstrikes, um, and you would be able to do all that um, to help the host out and um, have like a really cool, impactful effect. Um, and kind of show off all the stuff you've built up in your home game. Right. Um, so that got accidentally turned off. Um, and one of the things that was really high on my 
a list of things to fix was to turn that back on again and then make sure it all still worked, um, <laughs> make sure that everything was lined up. Um, and when something so gets so turned on. off, chances are something somebody else does in the future is going to break it and make it not work anymore. Right. Because, because you it, won't notice because it's turned off. Yep. Uh, so. And if you haven't been testing anything, then... Um, yeah, then things can just straight up um, go crazy wrong. And unless you're like actually paying attention, um, mm -hmm. when you turn everything back on, then things could have broken catastrophically. Uh, Thrill Seeker was asking, speaking of uh, toggle versus push to activate, um, is there a possibility of making zoom, uh, not aim, on scoped guns an option of... Uh, is, <sighs> Because right now it's a, it's, a, it's a toggle. You turn it on or you turn it off. Um, so I am uh, currently, like, another thing that's big on my, um, uh, that's kind of really big on my um, uh, to-do list, to -do list um, is to kind of revamp um, how our key binding screen works. Um, there are a lot of uh, things that are a little bit confusing on there, um, a lot of places where you can, like, accidentally unbind things and not be able to rebind them, so there's some bugs in there. Um, and then also there, like, we have heard things like, um, as we want to switch this from a hold to aim to a tap to aim. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, basically, um, we've basically just been, like, compiling a list of the things that we want to be able to do with it, mm -hmm. um, put down, like, sort of things like that on the design. Um, I can't make any... Um, promises whatsoever because I haven't even started writing the code for that. <laughs> um, but hopefully sometime relatively soon we'll be able to like start working on putting that together. And uh, definitely I'll keep in mind that uh, we want to see a like a uh, like a tap to zoom instead of a hold to zoom. Yeah, one one, one of the challenges with with uh, tap to aim versus hold to aim is the fact that several of our uh... Oh my Oh my gosh, my children just signed on to my account. <laughs> You know what? We're, we're almost at the end anyway. Why don't we just yeah. sit, sit and chat with some folks for a bit? Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. So my, my, my daughters are actually over at their grandparents' house. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm betting what happened was they wanted to play one of the games we own at home. Ah, but, the yes. only way, but the only way for them to get the, um, the rights to play it is to sign in with the account that bought it. Right. So, so they signed into my parents' Xbox yep, with my the account. Roaming license thing. Yeah, that's a, nice. that's a fun thing. Uh, next time I'm going to have to tell them, uh, don't do that on Wednesdays <laughs> between 1 and 2 in the afternoon. Just um, change the password. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I should. Anyway, um, the point is, uh, what were we talking, oh yeah, so uh, a lot of the things you do while you're aiming the gun, you know, aiming, you know, reloading, yeah. switching your um, switching your fire mode, and zooming, all kind of assume that, that the way it works is you hold it down, hold down one button, and then do the other thing. Right. I'm not sure how easily we could convert that, I mean, I mean clearly it's possible, because almost anything is possible when it comes to deciding how controls work, but I'm not sure how simple that would be to just make it happen. Uh, it might take some, some, multi some rewriting of multiple things. Right. Right. And that can always get dangerous. Like one, one, you know, one example that I think we talked about last week was the fact that um, we needed to do sort of a revamping of the way some of the skills worked uh, in order to support uh, stuff in Daybreak that we can't talk about yet. Um, <laughs> but while we were doing that, we needed to sort of fundamentally change all of the skills. And we were very careful to try to make sure that we didn't break anything. But unfortunately, uh, it's very easy when you're changing, you know, 20 skills. It's mm -hmm. very easy to just miss one. And so we did, and so we broke aim snap for about a week. Uh, aim snap just only worked if you had zero stars. And it was simply, like, basically we just referenced a buff in the wrong field in the yep. data. And that was all it was. It was just very, very easy thing to do. And so it would be very easy for us to break something to do with aiming guns if we tried to change fundamentally the way it worked and had to rewrite everything. Right. So so we're very cautious about changes like that because they're so fraught with potential for uh, for, for, for damage. Yeah, um, uh, like even one of the things that um, I'm doing right now, um, so, uh, um, so I'm looking at a whole bunch of performance things um, and uh, one of the one of the most insidious things about pro, uh, performance things is that like okay we found a chunk of code that is extremely slow and we want to make it fast so we basically go in there we figure out what that code does we figure out what we can do to make it faster and then we rewrite it what if we introduce a new bug when we're rewriting it and what if that bug is so deep within the system that we don't catch it until months later? Yeah, like you don't know what to test to find out if you introduce the bug because you right. don't realize all of the different tendrils that this feature has. Right. So for a while, uh, before we shipped, uh, we had a thing where occasionally um, cars, people, like specifically like different sections on people would all just like randomly start flickering black. Um, because um, uh, there was like some some weird glitch in our rendering pipeline 
um, where like the textures would not lay, where, where we thought that the textures should go did not line up with where we thought the model was. So the renderer um, it basically was all like, okay, no, we we want nothing to do with this, and basically <laughs> just didn't render any pixels there. Render, um, the renderer just went on strike. Right. Um, These so, working conditions are terrible. <laughs> so that was basically like a three plus week long investigation. Um, and it basically was all due to the fact that we had kind of like shuffled around the way a couple of things worked so that we could be doing more work simultaneously so we could be leveraging more of the cores on the Xbox One, on your PC. Um, and in doing that, we introduced like some a little like tiny synchronization issue where like we would start, uh, we would start, we would figure out where we wanted the mesh to be and then we would start rendering the frame and then we would then figure out where we wanted the texture to be and then tell the <laughs> renderer about it. So then like those two things wouldn't be lined up. So I had to like go in, figure out where that was, add a little bit of guarding so that we wouldn't actually start doing things until we had all the data, so on and so on. Um, we did have a question, a couple of questions from Challenger for Gaming, ah. uh, and that we want to make sure we get to because uh, apparently <laughs> he's asked this question multiple times and not gotten uh, a satisfying answer. Oh. So, uh, is the road cones on soldier zombies heads done on purpose? <laughs> I've been sitting on that question all week. I've seen it about 15 times. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, it is a small chance to spawn, but it is in fact deliberate. Yeah, this absolutely deliberate. It's, it, you know, the folks who, uh, the, you know, the artists on the team, a lot of them are really big fans of, of zombie games, zombie movies, and they love to make references to things like that. And so, yeah, it was it was a surprise to most of the team when it showed up in the game. In fact, I don't think they even announced it. They just sort of put it in the game <laughs> and let us in. notice it. We put it in. But uh, but yeah, but when it went in, like we we all thought it was hilarious, and so we absolutely you know kept it. Uh, because you know, cause we, all, we all, you know, we all loved Plants vs. Zombies back in the day when it first came out and mm -hmm. uh, even liked it since. So, you know, so that, yeah, so that's totally a Plants vs. Zombies reference. Right. And Challenger for Gaming also wants to know um, uh, that if he keeps bugging us, will we eventually put Santa zombies in the game? Um, and no promises, because no it is promises. not yet December. And that is when we would do it if we ever did it. So... Uh, so you'll just have to find out. You'll have to just play with Cornwallis and Paul Revere for a little while uh, and then see if we eventually add in Santa. So... Uh, so we're pretty close to the end of the stream. So if anybody has anything, any last minute things to say or ask, uh, you know, would love to love to accommodate you. I'll throw Mixer back up on the screen here. We've been looking at Twitch for a while. Mm. Um, let's see here. Oh, uh, Thrill Seeker wants to know: Would it be possible to introduce a flashlight upgrade for our survivors? Um, so the uh, the the distance that your flashlight illuminates things was a conscious and deliberate design decision because we want night to be spooky. Yeah. And also, I mean, I imagine that changing the way that lights work uh, will have some kind of performance impact. Um, or or so is, is it just the number of lights that matters? It'll have a performance impact. And also, we made a lot of uh, decisions about how we are doing, like, our whole... Uh, um, like our, our darkness rendering thing mm -hmm. around the idea that lights go out so far. So if you go out into the darkness, um, basically we've got basically the kind of like this, this dark fog sort of thing that kind of creeps in. Um, and pushing that back with a flashlight, I don't think is actually possible right now. So we'd we'd have to do some like serious rejiggering of how things work. In so order it's to, not like, as simple as just like let's yeah. let's make the light brighter. Like right. there, there's a lot more that would have to go into a lot more consideration. Right. Um, so I I think we should, however, I think we should replace the uh, for next Independence Day. We should replace all the flash roots with fireworks. <laughs> so maybe you turn your flashlight on, you're just spewing <laughs> sparks like crazy and just attracting all the zombies around you. I think that'll be that'll be a fun upgrade. Yeah. Uh, so we've got one minute left. Uh, I think that Wonder and Megan are posting links to our Discord um, on in, in the chat channels. So uh, if you guys want to uh, join our community and, and chat with us more, I mean, Jeff and I both at various points have been at, pretty active in, in Discord, so if you wanted to chat with us, Discord's a good place to do it. Uh, another thing you could do is each of us also have uh, Twitter handles. Uh, so you can chat with us there or go to the to at Undead Labs, which is our you know official you know company's Twitter handle, where you know, you're probably going to get more uh, professional answers uh, <laughs> <laughs> from the folks managing that, uh, who are named Megan. Uh, so, anyway, it's been really great having you all here. Thank you so much for coming to our stream. Thank you, Jeff Salt, for sitting in with us. Not and a uh, I just realized possibly being late for an appointment to do so. Uh, no, I actually managed to get that uh, pushed back half an hour specifically yes. for this. Oh, I appreciate that because yeah, I, I, th I thought I was going to have to solo the last half of this. So <laughs> I really appreciate you sticking around. You got much better answers to a lot of these questions than I ever could have given. So. All right. Well, anytime. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's the stream. So uh, we'll see you guys next week uh, with a, probably another programmer. Because, uh, you know, we need people who can, who can give you honest, serious answers to questions instead of just making stuff up like designers do. Uh, anyway. Please stop making stuff up. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys later.